What's up YouTube, it's your boy Grassy TV coming at you with another video for Hero Siege 2. Today's video is extremely important and I'm going to need your help. We are going to be discussing mine and several players' feedback for Season 4 in a well put together document. This information is going to be sent directly to Panic Art Studios where I've been told by the team that they will review this doc. If you have any additional suggestions or ideas, be sure to comment those below. I will be over checking this video for any additional things that maybe I've missed or just really good ideas that I wanna make sure gets on this list for Pentagon Studios to check out. Please be sure to be thorough with any of your suggestions as well as any class balancing suggestions. Keep those for a future video as they are adding over 200 skill trees to the game. So we don't really know where class balancing is gonna go at this time. Before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all of my future videos as we do have season 4.5 coming very shortly. Let's get started. First things first, I do want to give a special thanks to all of the viewers and players that have helped to make this document possible, as well as a special shout out to all of the boys, uh, Trader, Gaming Guru Gabe, Demonus Grimm, Snazzy Ape, Sassy, TDR, Boomhauer, Shady, Snowzone, Tiki Tack, and Alan. Thank you for all of your information. It's helped a ton in getting this document together. As a side note, I'm not going to edit this video a ton. We're just going to go through all these different bullet points, talk about it, and move on. So first of all, the seasonal races, these are super cool. You get everybody logging in at the same time, racing to be the first one to hit level 100. You do get a cool portrait for being the first person to hit level 100. However, players participating in the closed beta should never be able to claim prizes from any seasonal race regardless of the prize. This is not meant to discredit any of those players. It's simply to prevent unfair advantages, right? Uh, there is the hero level 100 for each class could also receive the same portrait for those who want to grind it. I think the highest level right now is 99. It just happened yesterday or the day before. It's it's almost a month into the season. They have plenty of time to grind out to be the first one to hit hero level 100 in case they miss that first day. Next, we'll go over balancing mobs. Uh, monsters need new interesting skills instead of everything just having an on death effect. The penalty for not having capped resistance, even as early as Act 1 normal, is far too high, right? And here's some of the, the different skills that we have found are just way too strong and need to be toned down. And it looks like they rated them from serious to minor. So I'll kind of go through these real quick. Uh, serious in all difficulties, poison damage is beyond strong when hit by a monster. Even with a max poison resistance and with 20% plus magic damage reduction. I don't believe someone needs to go out of their way to wear Grimbo marchers to deal with poison. We kind of talked about this on my stream, and I believe that this is already something that's being investigated, but I wanted to make sure that we get this in there. Poison hurts on everybody always, right? Uh, this is minor in hell, major in normal nightmare. Lightning damage shotgun and the arcane red ball uh, martyrdom. So the, the, you know, the infamous doll balls going everywhere. The lightning shotgun damage, I'm assuming they're talking about electrify, right? electrify lightning damage i think that's whenever you maybe you tp around you jump in a pack wherever it is like the projectiles start to come out from a single point and those can shock on you and insta kill you um same thing for the balls obviously you see the the wind up if you're in the middle of it all of them shotgun on you it is arcane damage um that's fine it's just it does so much damage because you have to no resistance and no real way to help mitigate that early other than getting arcane resistance on charms and gear everywhere which is fine but the game gives you like three percent on items when you're in act one there's no way that you could ever cap your resistances unless your entire charm inventory is full of just resistance charms for arcane right so that's something that needs to be toned down Earlier on in the game, this can be extremely frustrating to newer players and even experienced players while they're getting through normal and nightmare. And it's a bit overtuned and extremely shotgunny. It's just not fun to play. No point for it to be as harassing as it is. Uh, next, we have major and hell dungeons. Again, death effects. Certain dungeons are just kind of ridiculous. You get the fire explosives, you get the ice novas, the arcane pools. Those things, when you have max resistance, still feel like they're doing way too much damage. Next, we have questing. Uh, when playing a new ARPG, the very first thing that you do is typically talk to NPCs and you want to pick up quests and complete quests for rewards. Sometimes that quest chain just breaks and you can't re-pick it up or do anything and players feel super stuck and just having poor direction on what to do there. Um, so some things that you can do is add some flavor text to quests that generalizes an area where the player can do the quests. This is, again, one of the biggest questions that I get from new players in my stream is they'll ask, where can I do set quest or where do I turn this in or where do I? It could be a bit more direction in the questing. 
as well as in act one normal you need to show players how to prospect runes i can't tell you how many players don't know what prospecting runes is and this is extremely important even as soon as act one normal because you could make some pretty strong rune words to help you get through most of normal and nightmare that early the next thing we need to talk about is audio performance i absolutely love the sound effects in hero siege i think it's one of the best parts of the game whenever you drop a heroic or an angelic and it makes that ah, sound like i absolutely think it's premium sound effects however there are some in the game that you can't even hear at all or they just don't have them, right some of them will be like gabriel souls right whenever you kill uber uh, death or uber damien or the souls drop on the ground they look like a white item they have no beam and they make zero sound and i've had players i've watched players just completely miss them so that needs fixed up uh, bifrost and ruby keys are nearly impossible to hear and they could even use their own sound files their own their own sound effect would be cool um, however you all want to do that also the vanaheim portal needs some sort of like nuclear bomb sound to it because I can't tell you how many times I missed it. And if I know if I missed it, several of other players have missed it too. But honestly, a better fix to Vanaheim portal is just make it drop as a consumable after completing the total amount of kills and then just use the consumable and go in whenever you're ready, right? That could be a better option here. Next, we have zone lighting. Uh, the lighting of some zones is extremely intense and it's very off-putting. Uh, the main one being the angelic realm is completely blinding. Like if you don't have your brightness set to like 80%, that zone is blinding right same thing goes for whenever you get uh, the angelic zone from the from vanaheim or the chaos tower zone right the angelic zone and the chaos tower the, the partle full effects and the blue minute it's it's way too extreme it needs to be toned down um, as well as chaos tower visibility make chaos tower stand out a bit more on the map um, on some maps with a darker background it's nearly impossible to see them and pets can also block it from being visible on the map next we have the item market filtering and search functionalities as a first iteration, the highlight filter is pretty good. Um, I think the bigger issue here is that newer players don't know how to actually use the loot filter appropriately or the highlight filter appropriately. They don't know that the highlight filter will only highlight one affix per item, regardless of tier. Um, I've had countless players say that they don't think that my highlight filter is working. Um, it's highlighting items with fire damage whenever they do cold damage, right? The absolute best in-game filter that I've ever seen in any RPG is the last epox. It's fantastic, right? I'm not saying that y'all should copy paste it, but getting some inspiration from it could go a long way. Here's also some additional suggestions that we have to improve the current filters. The highlight filter also needs an undo button in case you accidentally hit apply to all and override all your stuff, you can undo it. Ability to select your own colors for each rarity and highlight color. As someone who is completely colorblind, I can't tell the difference between a set item and a rare, a mythic item and a blue item. I can't. I'm completely colorblind. Whenever I hear the satanic drop, sometimes I'm fiddling around for several seconds because I don't know that it's actually a set item, right? Like I know you get the star, I can see the star, but I do I, I don't know which one it is, right? So I'm looking around, I'm like, oh, okay, it's this, or I because I can read the name and I know what you know it is based off of the name, but I, like the magic item and the mythic item, I can't tell the difference at all. I have no clue which one's which, other than that, generally mythic items have a longer name, right? So the ability for me to be able to select my own colors is actually really, really important for me. So Obviously, there's uh, stars on the ground and colorblind options, but it's a poor fix. Yeah, it's a poor fix for people that are colorblind in general. Like, I do know that you have the colorblind options in there, and those will work for people that have those specific types of colorblindness. But colorblindness extends beyond just those types to fix um, everybody's colorblindness, right? You could just make it so that people could pick their own colors, and there's not that issue. Option to show only highlighted items. This is huge. I really want this, right? Once I have my filter together, my in-game filters and all that, just being able to turn off everything else and only see items that I want highlighted, that, that would be beautiful. Also, being able to change the color on highlighted items is just as important as, as this one up here, right? Maybe I don't want to see that, like, is it teal? I've heard people say teal or blue or whatever color it is. Maybe I want, want it to show up in yellow or something, right? So that'd be really important. Highlight items should have a drop sound. Yeah, is I can't tell you how many times I've been going through mass. I'm grinding away, especially if you're playing something like Fire Exo or Fire Totems or some sort of dot build or some sort of off screeny build or whatever, right? Something will drop 90 million miles away and you have no idea, right? It'll skip right past it. So it requires you to have to go through it and and basically uncover the whole map anyway, even though you're playing a build that you're trying, you're designing, 
you're playing a build that you've designed to not have to do that, but you have to do it anyway because the, the game doesn't notify you that you've found items in other places off your screen, right? So, yeah, highlighted items should have a drop sound. I don't know if you want to use one that's built in the game or, you know, give us the option to have, you know, some custom loot filter sound to be able to make our own. That would be sick. I understand that's a bit more work. It might not be possible, but something there is a good idea. Also having the ability to turn this on and off uh, with a toggle, right? Because not every item you want to play that sound. If you're leveling, you have 90 million items going off, right? Maybe you don't want the sound, right? So the ability to turn that off is also important. Um, the ability to use a paste pin for your loop filters could be a good option too. Like I use paste pin. I put a lot of my filters up there. Being able to just use that and put in a paste pin might be a better option than just you know, people trying to copy pasta the entire thing. So just a little bit extra quality of life on it. Advanced mod descriptions. I did make the suggestion in season four's closed beta testing. Um, and I'm aware that it's not currently an easy to do solution or even a, um, maybe a possible solution right at this time. But it's definitely very needed in a game that has over 800 affixes, right? Being able to hit alt on an item and see what tier that affix is and what that tier's name is, I think is super important for players to learn how to play the game so that whenever they're looking at items on the ground, they'll remember, oh, shock, that's the last tier. Next, we have auction house filtering. The three line drop down with all the affixes, it's really nice, but it needs a ton of TLDR, right? It's extremely confusing for new players to know how to search for items with those affixes because you have to go and filter right? Then change it by price. So you're looking at the cheapest price, hit refresh, then go into the, do all the affixes, select your one affix, and then it auto updates instead of you having to hit refresh. And it's like, it's creating, and that, that's assuming that you didn't make any mistakes, right? Like if you didn't press the show no runes in there, then you made a mistake. Guess what? Now you have to start over, right? It's, it's super tedious and confusing for new players. And that whole thing needs to be fixed up so that I can start by selecting items that relate to the Stormweaver class. And then I can go to the filter and maybe filter by armors. And then I can go and change sockets. And then also um, we need to remove rune words out of there. I think I have this in the, in the options already. Yeah, do not show rune words needs to be removed completely, right? As well as adding a search bar to that three line dropdowns where you can type in uh, class Stormweaver, where you can type in faster cast rate or magic skill damage or whatever to be able to find those faster because I'm tired of scrolling for 15 minutes <laughs> to just select my affixes, right? Like my finger is done because you have to go and you have to scroll through the highlight filter, you have to scroll through the market, you have to scroll, There's it's way too much. All of those need a search functionality to them, right? Yeah, the ability to select the multiple affixes from that drop down menu as well, right? Sometimes, so you'll click on all skills and then you search, you're like, okay, well, maybe I want FCR too. So you go grab FCR. Well, it doesn't update. You can't have more than one affix. So that needs fixed. You should select the rarities that you want to see instead of typing, um, instead of mythic, give me the option to select magic and mythic. So basically, what this means is that maybe I'm looking for an item where I don't want to see rares, I just want to see magic and mythic on that particular one, I should be able to do that, right? Instead of it just being like, oh, here's rare and all the way down and then mythic, it should be each individual rarity, right? That I can select to look for. Sash tab fuzzy searching, uh, searching the word arcane shows any item with the arcane affix instead of just items named arcane, right? Um, add in a search bar ability to put for affix searching. Next, we have additional quality of life. Having a class trial system would be a good idea. Just an option for players to go into a, like a pre-built environment with some skills that they can try out to see if they, you know, are interested in a class. Cube crafting quality of life. Have the ability to craft them multiple, the same gem or jewel in the same instance, instead of having to spam click them or otherwise maybe being able to collect all gems and jewels crafted at once instead of needing to click the individual boxes. Uh, pick up all ores with radial pickup. You know, whenever you blast, they just want to be able to click one time to pick everything up instead of still having to click them one at a time. Because what will happen is sometimes your companion just runs around like a chicken with its head cut off and never actually picks up those ores, leaving you to have to do it, right? Menu toggle to always show item ground preview when hovering over items. I hate having to press control, by the way. I, I think it's awkward. It's not something that my hand normally does. This isn't something that modern ARPGs do as well. Like every ARPG, if you hover over an item on the ground, it gives you a ground tooltip or a ground preview. 
So I think having this maybe on a toggle where I can just toggle to always be able to show. And if you're a player that prefers using control, then you can have that option as well, right? Filter items in the stash by level requirement, not just rarity. I actually can't tell you how many times this came up in my stream. There's a lot of newer players that are like, I found a ton of gear and I just don't know if I can wear it, right? Because maybe they found a ton of gear in Act 1 that required level 32 or, you know, whatever. And they threw it in their stash and now they're like going through things one at a time trying to find stuff. So being able to filter items by level requirement, I think is a really good option. Remove cooldown on portal. I'd rather have to buy town portals in D2 and manually click them with no cooldown than deal with the TP cooldown. It's very frustrating when it bugs. This is super true. I, I can't stand it personally. Like I'll be teleporting a bunch of people in to go fight a boss and I use it and I, I move so it kills it. And then I'm like, okay, well, I just stand here for the next 15 seconds until I can reuse it. Or I use it and it goes up and somebody takes my portal and causes my portal to disappear. And then that person doesn't know that they need to put one down. So then we're both just sitting there right it's really annoying remove remove the cooldown for teleport i don't know why it's there to begin with but reset should reset potions i'm not so sure on this one somebody made that suggestion and i couldn't think of any reason why vote resetting and having your potions up again how this could be malicious other than maybe um, I mean, you have to vote reset. It's 45 seconds anyway like your potions would always be available anyway the only situation i guess i could see is if you know, vote, vote reset is ready. You go into a zone, you open up the um, boxes, the abomination boxes, and you kill, you hit vote reset, you get all your potions back, and you go do it really fast again. You could do that for one instance, and then it's back to where it was before. So I don't think there's any problem with having your potions reset on vote reset. Uh, three to one glyph recipe for a random glyph, right? So maybe you have three mystic insights and you want to create another one. It's just a way to help delete items out of the game and, you know, for a chance for you to create another one, right? Add a small Merc bar under the player bar. Can't tell you how many times I, I just didn't know my Merc was dead, right? Especially if you go into Uber Reaper, you're just, you know, you're just blasting, not really paying too much attention, just your brain's turned off. You find out for the last 45 minutes that you've been um, grinding without your Merc. So having having a bar like right underneath, it's you know just a mini bar uh, to let you know that your merc is either alive or dead. I think it's just just good quality of life. Vote to kick players from a game, right? So sometimes there'll be a player in your game that that's not supposed to be in your game and they won't leave. I've had that happen. Uh, that's a good idea. Just being able to have everybody in general be able to vote to kick somebody from the game. Um, ideally, uh, when the game has more than two players, right? Shouldn't just be able to instantly you eat somebody out of your game if it's just you and them. As well as uh, when creating games, the password should look like this. Right? Whenever I'm creating games, especially on stream, people can see my password, right? They can literally see I have to change windows, change screens them it, they should it should just look like this right it should just look like this better pet pathing logic yeah we, we everybody kind of knows the, the pets don't stay with you they kind of go everywhere it's way better this season with the radial pickup like it, it is way better and obviously them being able to pick up way more things i think has a lot to do with the pathing i'm not sure what needs to happen here but i feel like I feel like my pet, a lot of times I just stand in one place and just kind of wait and let my pet do his thing and eventually I get everything. Um, yeah, not really sure there. Other than maybe making it a bit faster, maybe um, reducing the amount of things that are in the game, right, for it to pick up. Maybe like the later stages, you don't want as many like lower runes so that it's not going for them or maybe changing its priority so that it will always pick up like a high rune or jello key or whatever. Um, regardless of what else is on the ground, right? Like maybe it's on the path to go pick up a, a an old rune, but a burr rune drops right as that happens. It should change its direction to go pick up that burr rune instead or that key. Maybe that's something that's happening. I'm not. I'm not too sure on that one. Add a link to the Hero Siege Wiki in game. Now that the wiki is up and going, this needs to be in the game. Tutorial needs to, uh, to require you to click on the journal. Can't tell you how many players just don't even know the journal exists. They don't know about crafting. They don't know about augments. They don't know that there's a, an item uh, uh, index within the game, right? So the tutorial should like require you to have to hit that journal, right? 
give text to icons as well, right? So whenever you hit escape, they can see that, you know, the journal is the journal. It will literally say journal. It'll say shop. It'll say emotes, right? So make sure that there's, there's actual text on them. Character specific hotkeys. This one I added in because I can't tell you how many times I've switched from my Necro to an Exo to a Demon Spawn. They keep hotkeys, but Necro has so many freaking hotkeys. Right, I play that way different than I play EXO or play Demon Spawn. So I have to go through and change my controls every single time. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone into Sung Lee and I need to jump and I can't freaking jump because I usually put that hotkey on my spacebar, right, to be able to teleport around. And I go on a character that um, maybe doesn't have teleport and I can't freaking jump. So yeah, character specific hotkeys. A buffer remove the sulfur drink. The sulfur drink, one, I have a lot of players that ask me about it. I'm like, hey, you know, how do I get this page book? Or how many kills does it take me to get the gym? Or whatever it is. And my answer is always, it takes a lot of kills and it's not worth it, right? The sulfur drink is either needs a buff or it needs removed from the game. It's not worth the time that it takes players to get this ring. Obviously, it's up to them to make that discernment if it's worth their time or not. Um, but to me, it's it's just it needs buffed in the current version of the game, right? Add number plus icon to the minion tracker, right? We've kind of talked about this already on my stream where we'll have um, an icon for each different minion type as well as an actual number maybe in the bottom right of the of the picture for it. So we kind of talked about that. I think that's really important for all minion builds. But you can't tell what's where and it's you know all over the place with the circles right as well as the circles get messed up like sometimes you'll you say you use a valkyrie and then you use an abomination and then you use um, like a parrot or something they get intertwined within each other so that kind of needs cleaned up as well creating elixirs from leveled glyphs you could reward way more xp so if you had maybe a 77% quality glyph that you leveled to level four, and now you just found one that's a 94%, right? The one that you broke down should give you way more XP onto your 94, right? I think it's important to, you know, not obviously they should be penalized for putting all that XP on a previous glyph, but it should give you way more than it does. More than 50 monsters or less than 50 monsters tracker. Uh, PoE has this, right? If you click the tab in PoE, it'll tell you how many monsters are left in the zone if it's more or less than 50. Um, I think that's important just for players to know, like, how close are they to full clearing a zone for Chaos Towers, right? Potions to still fill uh, the belt, even if you don't have that specific potion quality. This happens to me a lot. Like, I'll have maybe a minor because I'm, I'm leveling, so I'm just now getting to Anubis and I go into Anubis and I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm doing my thing. I need a, I need a mana potion. I just ran out of mana potions. I'm like F right. I die. Come to find out I had mana potions the whole time. They just were one quality higher and my belt uh, didn't, can't make that discernment. It doesn't know the difference between like a major and a minor. So it doesn't add it. Right. So if you run out of potions of one type, it should autofill with the next one above or less to keep your, you know, your belt full. Or you could also have the option to select uh, which potions are on autofill, right? Because sometimes when you're playing through the game, if you're SSF or whatever, maybe you only have two satanic potions and your other two are a health and a mana potion, right? I want those other two to fill and I want my satanic potions to be used, but I don't want my health, my mana potion to be used every time. So I should be able to tell it, hey, when I press this hotkey, when I press Q, I want all all of my satanic potions to go off, which are these two. And then whenever I press E and R, E is my mana and R is my health, right? As an example, it doesn't do that now. All souls from bosses need a boss drop sound and a beam. We kind of talked about this already. Um, just again, I want to reiterate that these, these do need a beam. Add a hockey to swap skill loadouts. I don't know if there's any reason why skill loadouts don't have a hockey. If there's like an internal reason um, maybe if it is a bigger deal, add like a cooldown to it, add like a three or four second cooldown so that players can't just instantly switch back and forth over and over um, for, you know, whatever crazy interaction reason. But I think having a hockey to swap loadouts isn't really, there's no harm in it. You're doing it anyway, just by opening your inventory and pressing the two. You just have it on a keybind instead of creating another window to go to, right? So some food for thought. 
Uh, materials like runes, gems, keys should auto stack in the stash when we move them from the inventory with control left click. So if you have, I don't know, 10 burr runes in your stash, you go to put uh, another burr rune in your stash. It doesn't auto stack them. It puts it in another category and then you have to hit sort. It's just that one extra click that you have to do that, you know, maybe it does it on its own. Search bar to search item names in the journal. Right, right now, if I open up the journal and I want to find a, an Arcanium Asphyxiators, I have to go to gloves, I go to the rarity, I change it to, you know, sort by, the, by rarity, which is fine, I will find it that way. But if I want to find a Satanic, it's a pain in the ass, right? There needs to be and the ability to actually search and filter for a specific item. Make UI elements click through or locked. Hovering over skills while typing. Hovering over skills while trying to TP causes a tooltip to pop up. Right, so when I'm playing Demon Spawn and I'm like, you know, right clicking, destroying things in the top right of my screen, I constantly hit the quest UI and it drives me insane because it opens up another one that like it needs to be clicked through. Or one, you need, should have the ability to turn off uh, the quest state completely. Actually, if I add that right now, ability, if I can type, ability to turn off uh, quest UI completely. Right, and I understand that you can minimize it, but that's not the same because you join another game and guess what? It's not minimized anymore. So you have to do it every single game and it's really annoying, right? Just have the ability to, to turn off the quest UI completely. Uh, as well as whenever you're playing, right? Maybe you're shooting something in the bottom left here. Whenever you do that, if you hover over skills, you're, the tooltips pop up, right? It, that shouldn't happen. You should have the ability to um, make everything click through or just turn off the UI basically. Ability to click on any dungeon key, right? And it opens up the map and highlights the location of that corresponding dungeon. This is just an additional quality of life. Maybe, you know, players have Valor keys or they have Naga scale keys or whatever it is, and they, they don't know what dungeon that corresponds to. Being able to go into your inventory, like right click it, and then the map popping up and having like a, a yellow or a white, you know, pulsating icon or something to show them where that dungeon location is could be cool quality of life for some of the newer players, right? Next, we have in-game systems and seasonal events. This is my personal favorite. As the foundation of Heroes Siege 2 has greatly improved over the last few months, players are going to want to find new ways to play the game. Most of your uh, temporary season style ARPGs have ways or have season mechanics that are new every season where players will find new items, unique pinnacle bosses, uh, new season currencies, and just new rewards all the way around. And I, for one, understand that Paz is a smaller company, right? They don't have the uh, the brain power to create the complex level uh, seasons that like PoE does, for example. But you would be surprised how far even just a small league mechanic can really affect your game in a positive way. So what we've done here is I've created some different um, events. I've created some different things that you could maybe change about current systems or adding in new systems for like a seasonal event that wouldn't be too difficult to implement. So first of all, we have satanic zones, right? The current in-game system is chasing satanic zones for a good hour. Uh, this isn't a good player retaining a gameplay cycle, right? Like when you have a bad satanic zone, you know what players do? They log out and that's just not a good, uh, that's not a good cycle in my opinion, right? Satanic zones should always be good with the chance of them being insane right they should always be good with the chance of them being insane wormholes wormholes are currently just a delivery method for giving players seasonal rewards that's their only use right here's some additional ideas to help make them a bit more interesting you could create a talent tree with increasing difficulties and player rewards right because people love loot explosions so give them a tree that they can work for as they build through their wormhole and they unlock points can create um, a way for them to want to grind through wormholes as well as getting rewards for doing that and pushing even farther in, in wormholes, right? Wormholes should have their own specific drop table, right? There should be items in wormholes that you can only get in wormholes and nowhere else in the game. Ability to reselect desired wormhole level after completing it once. So maybe you complete level 75. You should be able to go back to level 75 and grind that one in particular, right? with its increased loot because you have that tree or um, just creating more rewards the higher up that you push into wormholes, right? Maybe you as a player hit wormhole 175, right? You should as a player should be rewarded for doing that. 
Now you can't make it too insane because you don't want the 175s to be hoarding all the loot, but giving them maybe some incentive for being that high and pushing even farther is a great way to keep people, you know, in, in wormholes and wanting to grind that content out, right? I think another really cool system would be adding another mini game into wormholes, like creating your own charm. Um, this will give you basically the game will give you a, a charm that's empty, right? And as you're going through wormholes you, at the end and the, the giant loot explosion, maybe you drop a charm specific item, like a charm fragment that has gold find on it or magic find on it or uh, lightning skill damage or a, a specific attribute or whatever. And you can actually put that on your empty charm. And when you do that, it increases the level requirement on that charm, right? So you can make it all the way up to level 100 if you want to add hero levels into it maybe you can make it up to you know hero level 140 and as you continue putting these these charm fragments in there it increases the level up to whatever level you are so as you continue getting a higher hero level in the game right it allows you to maybe farm up another charm obviously you can't make these too insane you can't have like plus two to skills rolling plus three you know plus three to levels on the actual charm but, you know, this could be a really cool way for players to create their own charm and interact with the game. Maybe if they're doing wormholes, they want to get, you know, much more damage. They can add in a charm for more damage. Maybe they're farming a satanic zone that has, you know, plus two loot goblin on it, but it has no magic find. Maybe now they can use their charm that has magic find with uh, a little bit of gold find or rune chance or whatever it is that you want to give them extra in that charm, right? Wave-based mechanics. I think this game would be fantastic with wave-based mechanics. So somebody mentioned this. Remember the old Unstable Rift with waves, right? Maybe bring that back, revamped as a seasonal event where players could opt for reward or go further in the waves with higher rewards. That would be really cool. I think wave-based mechanics are some of my favorite uh, uh, ARPG-style content, right? Because you're, you're testing your build against each wave. You can see the reward, and you're like, oh, do I want to go for that? Do I want to get something better, right? I think that's a really good option. Uh, another good example of this is Pee Wee's Ritual League. If you've never seen Ritual, Google it, check that out. Really cool. I think it would work really well in Hero Siege. A mapping system. I know I'm not the first one to talk about a mapping system. I'm still going to give my thoughts on it anyway, right? With, of course, not another passive tree. So the way that a mapping system could work is you'd have different tiers of maps with each map type having a different uh, specific damage theme, right? So maybe one map has fire, one map has coal, one map has arcane. Like there's different damage types that you have to deal with within uh, these different maps. Each of the map boss will have a chance to drop an Uber Damien part or maybe a soul gem, right? Each map boss could have a percent chance to drop a fragment for a new Uber boss, right? So maybe, maybe you add six new maps in Right, and each one of those bosses in those six maps has a fragment that you need to collect. You put all of them together, and now you have a, a, another new boss, kind of like Uber Damien, just with mapping. Right, there could be something more to that, but that's just initially what I thought of how to get to maybe a new river boss or make create a pinnacle boss. Uh, you could use this system as a way for players to spec into specific content that they enjoy farming. Right, so you could have an atlas tree basically for the mapping system or a mapping tree, however you want to put it. And some examples of this might be uh, you could spec into unstable rifts where you have a guaranteed chance for that map to have an unstable rift in it with maybe a 20% chance to find an additional unstable rift. So you could find maybe two or three unstable rifts in one, one map, right? With a 1% chance for dusts um, to drop as a full stack, right? So that could mean that you could drop a heroic dust or you could drop an angelic dust or whatever it may be. And there's a chance that they will be a full stack, right? Uh, you could use that same example for eternal battlefield, shadow realms, any of that sort of thing. Next is harbingers. <laughs> if you're not familiar with harbinger league and POE, once again, go check that one out. I think that could make a lot of sense in this game as well. You'll encounter an enemy NPC that will spawn portals or monsters will pop out in rounds basically. And these monsters can draw gold runes, dice keys, gems, dusts that are up to angelic. Uh, kind of the same idea here. You have a chance to duplicate those job, those drops. And you also have a small chance to find a powerful NPC or a powerful harbinger that will guarantee drop a heroic or higher item, right? It should also be a 100% chance to get this NPC if spec'd into it. Uh, so we could also add in here 
a percent chance to find additional uh, harbingers. Well, we'll call them enemy. We'll call them enemy NPCs, right? They're harbingers, right? I, I think it makes a lot of sense in this game. Next, we have a better corruption system. I think that the current Satanic Dice just being a divine orb, it, it's great and all, but it could be way better, right? It could make items way more exciting by maybe improving them 5 to 20% more, right? Maybe you hit it with a Satanic Dust and it gets 20% better than its current version. Maybe you slam it and adds in a brand new affix on that item, right? That just makes you decide that you're going to keep a... I don't know, instead of using a condos, maybe you decide to go an iron ring of Prometheus because you slam plus one on it. Or maybe you slammed additional FCR, so now your ring has 60 FCR on it or something, right? I think that adds way more variety than creating more bloat in items. As well as, whenever you do brick an item, it shouldn't just say corrupted and be a, a heroic. So it should change the item completely. It should be a mythic item, right? that turned into a random world mythic item with a corruption applied to it. I think that's the best way to handle corruptions um, on items that break. Next is a weekly quest idea. This one was just funny. Complete a wormhole using a random build generated by the game, right? And it doesn't matter whether you own that character or not. It's going to give you a random build, right? Uh, that you can just you just YOLO. You YOLO through the wormhole, and if you complete it, guess what? You get the extra juice, right? Um, obviously, you'll need to figure out a way to make it possible uh, on every class, but, I mean, it could be a really fun way for people to try out a new class. So, next we have uh, user-specific requests. These will be updated as players in the comments of this video start putting their suggestions in. I will you know, tag them and add this stuff in here. Here's just a few that... So the boys had uh, Vero wants a trapper class, a D2 uh, assassin, so that he can use claws again. MB wants the angelic drop rate increase so that he can get more drops. Mr. Mataki wants way more ways to get phasing. Fuckwork is looking for uh, the font on text to be changed. Apparently the one that, he, that we have now, the updated one, uh, gives him a headache and he has to turn on colorblind mode in order to play the game. So he wants the ability to maybe go back to the old font or change the font in the current game. Sharpie is looking for <laughs> minions to be perma when you create a new game. So if you hit save and exit, you go into a new game. He wants his minions to be there, right? He doesn't want to have to resummon his minions. Exile wants you to front load all skills in the first few levels so that all skills met everything, melt everything at the start of the game. This is kind of like instead of um, players having to find that first additive damage item, you give them that that additive damage as a as just front loading that skill so that all skills in the game doesn't matter what you pick. At level one will kind of annihilate things but then you have to find something to continue pushing your next we have bugs i'm not going to go through all of these right these are more so just for pentagon studios to check out um but you are welcome to look at some of these pause the video and read through them if there's any additional bugs that you guys know about be sure to leave those in the comments i'll add them in here and we'll get those situated and that's going to wrap up this video i do want to give another special shout out to secret trader gaming guru gave demon is grim the snazzy ape sassy tdr Boomhauer TV, Shady Broker, Snow Zone, Tiki Tack, and Alan Zoo, all the boys. I appreciate all of the feedback and suggestions that you guys have given, all the collaborations that we've done to be able to make this document happen, to be able to give to pass, to just to make the game as great as we can make it. Obviously, there's a lot of passion in the game right now with all of these players. Everyone's having a fun time playing this game, and it feels so freaking good to just be playing Hero Siege in uh, 2024. So all the viewers and players as well, you guys have been amazing. Everybody, thank you once again. If you like this video, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up. It does help the channel a ton. If you want more Hero Siege 2 content, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all my future videos. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.